This is a giant homemade battleship. This is a lake, and this is me climbing aboard for the maiden voyage, hoping that it doesn't sink. Fire. I wanted to build the world's biggest RC battleship, and this video is all about testing it for the first time. But as you might expect, not everything went to plan. My feet are getting wet. For the uninitiated, we're no strangers to slightly mad projects here on the Project Air YouTube channel. Oh! This is the story of how I spent six months building a giant model boat and took it to a lake to see if it would actually work. And this all started by gluing together sheets of foam boards to form a massive 16 foot hull that was then covered with fiberglass. As you might have seen in my previous video, we fitted this out with a large plywood deck to turn it into a huge RC aircraft carrier that could launch and land RC planes. Now the plan had always been to turn this simple RC aircraft carrier into a fully operational battleship with full on functioning cannons that could shoot at things. Whoa! So the next step was to engineer some supersized nerf blasters powered by rubber bands, as seen on the last video on my channel. These took several iterations to get right, but they all followed the principle of how a basic spring nerf blaster works, using a piston to compress air behind a foam dart, which fires out of the barrel. Next I had to make some motorised turrets, which used a geared mechanism to turn. As you can imagine, this was a massive amount of work, but I had lots of help from friends and volunteers who came along to get stuck into this giant model engineering project. Our plan was to take the battleship to Rudyard Lake, a 1.5 mile long body of water where the rangers had kindly given us permission to conduct the test. Now all we needed to do was wait patiently for some good weather. The weather isn't looking too good at the moment. Um, to say the least. It's not supposed to look purple, this map, and it's very purple today. The lake was quite sheltered down at the slipway where we planned on launching, but it could get very windy out in the middle of the water. I decided we'd have to risk it. Hopefully the world's biggest RC battleship wouldn't become the world's biggest RC shipwreck. Right, good morning, it's D-Day. After waiting weeks for a clear day, we got up on a frosty but otherwise perfect morning, excited to finally see the giant model battleship on the water. But the first challenge was getting the hull onto the trailer without breaking it, which was quite a tense moment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope it gets there in one piece. We've just got here. It's not very windy because we're in this sheltered lower bit of the lake. Fingers crossed we'll be able to get uh, some good uh, control over the boat when we put it in the water. Not really sure how the top end of the lake is going to be, but we'll see later on. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's time for the launch, so let's get this thing in the water. Can you just grab the underside? That's it. Just... It almost went in, straight away. It was only 8.30. <laughs> now it was on the water, the hull could be towed around to the dock, tied up and then fitted out with its turrets and electronics. This is our battery, it's just a big car battery. We used this on the last mission with the aircraft carrier, did really well, lasted all day. Everything was going according to plan so far, but then we met our first big problem, which threatened everything we'd worked for. Now, there's a bit of bad news here, everyone. There's water coming in somewhere. Oh, no. Only a little bit, but a lot more than last time. The hull must have a leak. That's not good. The amount of water coming into the hull was currently within our specified limits, but we'd have to keep an eye on it. If the boat took on too much water, it could end up at the bottom of the lake. With technical help from design engineer Emma, we now mounted the electric outboard motor, hooked up the steering servo, and powered on the battery. Ready, this is where it could all explode. I think we're okay. The battleship was now almost set for its maiden voyage, but the crucial final step was to prime and load the enormous cannons. This involved pulling back each plunger to stretch the rubber and secure the aluminium hooks with the servo mechanisms. Right, just don't go in front of that cannon, Dad, okay? Stay there. <laughs> The first big test of the day was to see how manoeuvrable the giant battleship was in the tight sheltered harbour. And at the same time, I wanted to check the cannons worked by firing them at some unsuspecting targets. Ready, three, two, one. Oh, 
Get out of the way! <laughs> Woo! It works! Yes! Look at that! Perfect! Right, let's swing it around. Thankfully, despite the breeze, the boat was actually quite agile. And at this point, it didn't seem to be sinking. With some adjustments from myself and Emma, we got the prop further into the water, which really seemed to help. Now I could aim the cannons at their first target. Okay, coming back around, I'm gonna fire at my dad, who's standing just there. With my target in the sights, all I had to do was press the right button. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. And firing, three, two, one. Oh, I pressed the wrong one. Dad, stop backing away. <laughs> it's going to hurt. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, the foam darts floated as intended and could be easily recovered. However, this would become a problem later, as you will see. It does look quite menacing. <laughs> <laughs> Angling the turrets, both of them this time. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> right, well, we'll bring it back to base, reload, and then start the next mission. This whole thing took an awful lot of work, and to be here today has just been a huge effort. So, if you appreciate that, make sure to subscribe down below. Thanks. The boat was working really well, but what lay in store next would be a lot more challenging. During the battleship's construction, seeing as though it was going to be absolutely enormous, I thought it would be a good idea to cut a hole in the deck and build a superstructure so I could actually climb inside it. As with many of my best made plans though, it turned out I'd made a crucial oversight. <laughs> I've become a battleship. <laughs> oh, I can't really fit very well with this life jacket on. I didn't measure it for the life jacket. There we go. You're okay. wedged in there. I am wedged. Could you pass the transmitter, please? <laughs> this is amazing. The plan was to take the boat into the middle of the lake, about one mile away, to see if it could make it all the way there and then return to base, without any problems. However, we did have a problem, which was the boat was still taking on water. Oh, there's quite a lot of water in there now. When you say a lot of water? There's a fair amount. It's just there. As the boat had taken on a fair amount of water without an added payload, I was a little worried about climbing on board. However, I'm all about pushing things to their limits here on Project Air, so I decided to risk it. If something goes wrong, you're responsible to, to rescue me, okay? <laughs> okay, goodbye, son. Okay, cheerio. Doot, doot, doot. Well, this is fantastic. I am captaining my own remote controlled boat from the inside. It's only slightly leaking in here. Naval superiority has been established. Now to find a target to fire at. Testing the forward turrets. Testing the rear turrets. I've turned against you. Three, two, one, fire. <laughs> Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. Fire! Oh, I got John. <laughs> the turrets were performing perfectly. Every shot was landing on target. Unfortunately for me, I'd now made a few enemies who were plotting a retaliation. <laughs> well, when you get close to it, we'll throw this at him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the count of three, two, one, and return fire! <laughs> right, mission complete. The battleship works on the open water with the cannons. All was going according to plan, apart from an issue that was getting worse. We hurried back to base to check the leak. Oh, you can see how much water's in here now oh as well. Oh my god. Look, this isn't good. It's not very safe, is it? I think we might have to move this battery. <sighs> We could now plan for our final mission, which was to search and locate a target along the shore of the lake using the battleship's RC reconnaissance plane. Before that though, it's time to thank the sponsor of this video, Exta, who sent me this rather nice wallet. Exta is celebrating their anniversary with a huge sale from February the 16th to April the 13th. And to mark the occasion, they kindly sent me some of their products to check out. This wallet is super nice quality and made from sustainable materials like vegan Italian leather 
and space grade aluminium, which is rather up my street. It also has a neat solar powered tracker that helps you to locate the wallet if you misplace it, with a two way ringing feature and separation alerts. Oh no, I can't find my wallet. Oh, excuse me. What are you doing with that? Thank you very much. In addition to being easy to find, it's really secure with its built-in RFID blocking, which protects you from data theft and wireless skimming. Currently, Extra is having a huge anniversary sale with up to 30% off. Click the link in the description and use my discount code Project Air to get an additional discount on top of the web sale. Thank you very much to Exta for sponsoring this video, and now back to the battleship's final mission. Next, we needed to test out the coolest feature of the boat. No longer were we simply testing the cannons by firing them randomly, now the test was to see if the battleship was controllable enough to successfully hit an actual target. This target was positioned somewhere along the lakeside, so it would be the job of the scout plane to find this target before flying back to the battleship, which would then sail back up the lake and attempt to hit it. This plane, shown in my last video, Video on Project Air was made from foam board and polystyrene and other basic materials, but its key feature is this first person view camera mounted in the cockpit, so I could fly the plane through an FPV perspective using a pair of video goggles. I've done loads of videos featuring this cool tech from slot cars to submarines, so I thought this would be the perfect way to emulate the seaplanes real life battleships used to scout ahead and find their targets. Alright everyone, this could go wrong in a matter of seconds. The plane was very small and lightweight, so flying it was a real challenge for my flying skills, especially with the windy weather. Could I find the target and make it home? I circled my way up to altitude and then set off towards the top end of the lake, keeping a careful lookout for the colourful target. I soon found I had a big problem though. As the video signal started to get quite poor, the further away I flew, making it difficult to see where I was going. My picture's breaking up a little bit. Thankfully, I had my spotters on hand. You definitely just above the trees. Flying mostly using the horizon and a few hazy landmarks, suddenly I caught sight of the target through the static. So I know that the, the target is a very, very big, colourful tarpaulin. There it is, I can see it there. Right, turning it around. I'm going to bring the plane back to base. Oh, going past these masks. This was the first time this plane had flown over water, so could I land it without flipping over? Ooh. Hey! Mission accomplished, we know where the target is. Now we can get this boat on the water and we can go and find it. Let's see if I can take off again. Oh! 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 <laughs> I lined up the forward turret for a shot on target, but things didn't exactly go to plan. Yes! Oh, I've run aground. Oh no. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Ah! Can you tow me out, please? With the sponge like foam, the slightly expanded and heavier darts weren't firing as far as expected. I probably needed to add more rubber to the cannons, but I realised that the soggy darts might be to blame. I think that these cannons have uh, got less powerful over the day because of the moisture. We'll have to do some investigating, but um, yeah, I think there's a bit of a friction problem going on. So with that, we'd finally managed to put the world's biggest RC battleship to the test and found that, although there was room for improvement, with a bit of DIY engineering, hard work and help from your friends, you can create something that's really quite impressive. Well, we've certainly made the largest RC battleship in the world at over 17 and a half foot long. Now, the really cool thing is that we actually got an official world record for the RC aircraft carrier that this boat was before the battleship. So yeah, we're now on the Guinness World Records website with this boat. That was all approved recently, so yeah, that's rather nice, isn't it? So if you want to watch more ambitious DIY engineering projects just like this one, then you should definitely subscribe to the Project Air's channel. It's free, so go ahead, click that button. And if you want to watch another video right now, then here's one right here. So check it out, and thanks very much for watching.